Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. All right, we've got the Growing in Grace podcast, growingingrace.org. And a lot of people are finding us these days, of course, on your favorite podcasting app. I'm Joel Breezeke, Breezy, along with my cat. How's it going, cat? Hey there, Joel. Hope you're doing okay. Uh, glad to have all of our listeners with us once again for the Growing in Grace podcast, where we've been talking about salvation by grace through faith alone. It's not of works. We boast in nothing. And I know sometimes people will say, well, yeah, but if, if you don't have works, you know, is that enough to save you? Uh, well, J- James asked that question, which is kind of what started this whole thing. <laughs> I don't know, Joel, if you're going to consider putting on I, I, one of those little packages that you bind together a, as a series uh, for people to be able to access. But the reason we're talking about grace by faith alone, salvation coming through that has to do with the series we recently did uh, on Paul and James and some of the apparent disagreements they have with uh, things that they said. Yeah. Well, actually, on YouTube, uh, which is one place where people can listen to the podcast, I I have been doing a playlist. A person can go to the playlist. It's called Paul and James or something like that. (laughs) I can't think of what it's called now. (laughs) I just automatically put them in there every week. Like you say, that is kind of what started all this. We, uh, We would constantly... And I, even up to this day, I still get people who aren't familiar with us and uh, in our Paul and James series. And just the other day, I posted something in a social media group about salvation by grace through faith. I mean, it had some, I don't remember what the exact thing is that I posted, but someone said, James said, faith without works is dead. And so it's <laughs> like, you, you know, you can go through this time and time again, and you can talk about how Paul made it clear in all these epistles that. Salvation is by grace through faith, apart from works. You know, Abraham was justified by faith. Abraham believed God, and God counted it to him as righteousness. That was long before Abraham ever did anything. And you can go through all that and then add all that Paul said about that and all these things that we've been talking about for the last few weeks, and ultimately someone is still going to say, what about James? So James is there. He's not going anywhere, I guess, but... And again, as we said before, the whole point of this, we're not putting down James. We're just talking about these differences that Paul and James had. And in the early church, there was a growing period. As we said, all throughout the Paul and James series, there was a growing period where there were Pharisees, there were church leaders who were Jewish people who had come to believe in Jesus, who still thought that the law and works needed to be added in there for salvation. And Paul had to oppose a lot of that. Paul had to come against some of that stuff. And in a lot of his epistles, you'll see him, whether he's directly opposing a message, like uh, we talked about in the last couple weeks, where he said, you know, some are preaching another gospel, which is really no gospel at all. It was a gospel of grace plus works, Jesus plus works. But he said that's no gospel at all. And, you know, we still have to come up against some of that stuff today, too, uh, just as Paul did. Yeah, I mean, that that's absolutely for sure. I mean, you know, it really what James said there, that faith without works is dead, that's something maybe we can get into in a little more detail uh, again sometime, because I, I think there's something to be dug into there where he almost said it backwards. But uh, moving on here, though, with some of the things that Paul was communicating about the, the revelation of the, the gospel of Christ that comes apart from works, that, that that law of works was not based upon faith, you see. So we have two opposite ends of the spectrum here. It can't be both grace and works when it comes to our our justification. And I'm not sure where you'd like to start this week, Joel. I, I know we were, I'm not in Philippians right now, but I know we, we talked about maybe taking a look there and jumping into Colossians. So if you've got anything in Philippians pulled up, I will let you step in on that one. Well, yeah, I've got Philippians open. You know, it's, we're talking about works and, and faith and all that stuff. And, you know, something Paul had said that kind of trips people up sometimes, quite often. <laughs> he's writing to, to the Philippians, and he's talking about, you know, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And 
he says all these things and he says, therefore, my beloved, in, in Philippians 2, 12, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And that trips people up because, all right, Paul is this big, you know, faith apart from works guy. What's he talking about works here? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling even. I mean, it's like I thought, Paul, that it was by grace or faith apart from works and our works don't even have a part to do anything to do with it. So why are you talking about fear and trembling and and working out your salvation? Well, I mean, a person's got to we talk often about how we can't just take one verse or even a little phrase here. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling and make a doctrine out of it, look around and, and see what the big picture is that he's saying. And as you continue, he says, For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do, for his good pleasure. So he's not saying to work for your salvation. It's it's work it out with fear and trembling. And that fear and trembling is, that phrase is interpreted as awe and wonder. It's like God is in you. God is working in you um, to will and to do for his good pleasure. And it's like, wow, this is an awesome, wonderful, mighty God. Have a lot of awe and wonder as you, this salvation that you have, let it be worked out of you. It's not that you can, you can't do anything to work for your salvation, but the salvation that you have, you know, to Paul's giving them a pr some practical advice here. He's not demanding that they work for their salvation. So he's he's not saying he's not adding works. You don't have to work in order to be saved. And so it's that's just one of those things that trips people up. So I thought as we're going through Paul's words that would be a good thing to bring up. Yeah, you can go into the next chapter and see where Paul says in 3:7 of Philippians, uh, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet, indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. And uh, here's the highlight here and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, <laughs> which is from the law, from works, in other words, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. You see, again, the law is not based on faith. Uh, and so Paul was giving up all of that along with everything else so that he may uh, experience Christ and, and be found in him, not with righteousness through works which he has done, uh, which comes through the law, through what people did, through their own efforts, but that which is through faith in Christ, the, the, the special kind of righteousness, not a self-righteousness, a Christ righteousness, true righteousness, but it's by grace through faith. It's, it's just, it's apart from the law. Yeah. I think the most important thing he says in that chapter in Philippians 3 is verse 2, beware of dogs. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> you, you see it on fences everywhere, but it's missing, it's missing Philippians 3, 2 underneath it, as, you know, to, to identify that. Right. And they're, and they're taking that way out of context, all those people who put those signs in their yards. <laughs> 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 no, but yeah, Paul, that's, and that go, it just, but really in context, all this goes along with what he's saying. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation. Who was the mutilation? It was those who were trying to get people to be circumcised and keep the law in order to be saved. It's one of those things where I was talking about where Paul had to deal with this stuff going on in the church, where there were people who were saying, you have to be circumcised and keep the law in order to be saved. But he says, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. I mean, do you see what he's saying here? You know, people will take the first part of this. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers. And they'll say, see, beware of those sinners out there, people who would get drawing you into sin. That's not what he's talking about. The evil workers, the dogs, beware of the mutilation, are the ones who are trying to put people under the fleshly commandments. And Paul is saying we have no confidence in the flesh. He even talks about how he would have confidence in the flesh. Look at all of these things about me. I mean, he goes through 
about seven things here, I think. Uh, circumcised, the stock of Israel, uh, the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But he says, what things were gained to me? This is what you brought up. These things I have counted loss for Christ. See, I, I always heard that verse, again, out of context in the church. You know, I, I got to take all my sin, my past sin, the past evil things that I've done, and those were gained to me, my past lifestyle, and now I count that loss for Christ. Well, it's not a big deal. That's a good thing to count your past life as loss, but that's not what Paul's talking about here. He's talking about confidence in the flesh, confidence in the good things that you do. That is what he counted as dung and rubbish. That is the stuff that he wanted to, that he said he had to die to in order to be joined to Christ. Well, speaking of that, uh, if we bump over real quick to uh, the book of Colossians, verse 11, chapter 2, in him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands uh, by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. It's a different kind of, it's a spiritual circumcision, so to speak. We were buried with him in baptism. You were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And he goes on. Let me get to the crux here. You were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh. He has made us alive together with him, having forgiven all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements. Remember those stone commandments that were against us. They were contrary to us. He has taken them out of the way, nailed it to the cross. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. So let no one judge you in food or drink or regarding a festival, new moon, Sabbaths. The substance here is Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward. You you died to those uh, basic principles of the world. So don't sub subject yourselves to regulations. Don't touch, don't taste, don't handle. Those things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men, these things indeed have an appearance of wisdom and self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but they are of no value, no value against the indulgence of the flesh. So again, grace by faith alone. That's where we stand in Jesus Christ. Yes, exactly. By grace, through faith, apart from works, uh, apart from the works of the law. That's one thing that Paul really fought against throughout his life as an apostle, trying to lead people to grace. And apart from the law, apart from the works of the law, he even talked about this thing called, as we've been talking about, another gospel, which really isn't another gospel. That's the mixture of law and grace for salvation and for daily living in Christ. And he warned Timothy about people who, well, it says, uh, people who desired to be teachers of the law. These people have strayed, he said. They've turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. And we'll talk about that on next week's Growing in Grace podcast. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.